my taking. Yeah, starting with um, almost lunchtime, I wanted to say, and instead of lunch, you need to endure my German accent um, and decipher a few weird German words. So my sympathies, speaking of sympathies, are on your side in this case. Let's start easy, maybe with, with a poll that I want to do by raising your hand. Um, the current dynamics of sustainability, do you think businesses need to undergo a transformation? Please raise your hand. Majority. Second question, do you think that technologies are inadequately used so far? So they should be used more than, please raise your hand. Okay, actually you all passed the test. You can go to lunch, that's it. No, I saw a few people not raising their hands. So I take the opportunity to convince you. Yeah? Um, for over 10 years, I've been driving transformations with my clients, um, actually conventional transformations. What would that be? It's strategic reorientations, reorganizations, digital transformation, energy system transformations of countries. And now there is the sustainability transformation. And they all have certain patterns, certain things in common. It's a huge complexity. It's enormous amounts of pressure. It's a lot of attention by, by numerous stakeholders. Um, and we have a lot of speed that is required in order to make it happen. And I must say what I've seen, sustainability has a complexity that is unheard of before, also in comparison to all of the other transformations. And for me, technology and AI is still not, or technology and especially AI is still not leveraged enough. And I want to take it to an extreme, actually, by saying it's actually the single most important mean to achieve the goal. If, if we only knew what, when, how, when, where to use it. Yeah, there's a lot of question marks still there. And we'll dive into that now going forward in this presentation. Um, I do believe that, um, um, as I said, we, we're not doing enough right now in order to meet the speed and the complexity. Um, I'm not going to present about Siemens and our technologies. I know you would love to hear about trains and power plants and all of that, yeah? but we take it to a different level. Um, I will also repeat a few of the things that have already been brought up. And I think that's a good thing because it showed me we're all thinking into the same direction. Um, but I make some extreme points just for the purpose of making extreme points also. You'll see that. Um, it's also a pledge for an entrepreneurial mindset, I must say, entrepreneurial mindset to apply existing technologies to the green cause, not to reinvent the wheel, but to use what we have in order to make it happen. So the question would be, why have we not been able to leverage it yet, right? Why are we not using the technology? And in order to go, get to the ground of this, I would look at three problems that we're currently facing. The first being enormous complexity, as I said, and at the same time, enormous intransparency. Actually, it's two black boxes. One black box being the enterprises and the second black box, the playing field. So the playing field that we play on, right? If we look at the first black box, the enterprises, what do I mean by that? Um, I mean by that, that, for example, there's a lot of environmental indicators we need to report on. We've heard a lot about carbon footprint and I know we all focus on that. Legislation is on top. What about all the other ones? Biodiversity, recyclable, plastics, waste. There's actually 400 KPIs that our major clients right now try to figure out to create transparency on, because that's what we expect to be reporting on in a couple of years time, at least in the EU zone. So 400, how are you going to make that happen? Especially if you look at where, what are the sources of those emissions? It's buildings, it's fleets, it's your operations, it's your suppliers. You don't have any clue about your suppliers actually in that respect, right? Enormous complexity, even if you look at you have regional companies in your businesses at times if you're a global player. You have different business entities. Um, and moreover, you've got subsidiaries. You don't have access to their data necessarily. So making sense from all of that and translating it into what's a strategy, how to actually steer my, my business is super complex and you end up with a chaos like this picture. No clue, right? Exaggerating. If we look at the playing field, it's a similar situation numerous legislations out there. I mean, yes, we know about EU taxonomy, CSRD, a few things coming, but actually every country has their own, or at least economic region, their own legislation coming up. It's quite nebulous, we would say in German. I hope it's a similar word in English. <coughs> at the same time, you're looking at what are you actually reporting on, yeah? Um, and what are the things you can calculate? What are the things you have to measure to prove it? What are the things where you have to set targets how ambitious do you want the targets to be? Do you have to be on top of the game and for you in, in comparison to your competitors all the time? Not necessarily. Yeah. So how far do you actually want to jump? 
And then lastly, complete chaos again. Yeah, you have demands not only by regulatory bodies, but by your clients, by investors that demand certain things, yeah? by public. Public scrutiny is a big thing. So what I want to show by this is that we have two moving targets, actually. And, uh, two moving targets. We have an intransparency on the playing field. At the same time, we try to adjust our strategy and our business to it without knowing what the baseline is. So it's very complex. It's very complex. And we're not leveraging data and technology enough to bring a little more sense on that or, or um, sense about that. If you if you would leverage it enough, yeah. If you if you could make it, um, if you could be on top of not doing things manually anymore, um, if you could connect the dots, you would leverage information, and information is is often equal to data, right? So. I also want to pay, make a point that's exciting times. We're in a transformation. That's big opportunity. We've heard that before. I, I don't know who it said, but it's opportunity. And for me, it's about an opportunity game. The second problem that we have is that we do not see it really as a business transformation yet. If we would see it as a business transformation, we could learn from other business transformations, especially when we say, what are managerial virtues and they're called yeah managerial virtues by which we made it happen in the past when businesses transform they face certain challenges that you see here on the board next to the transparency issue talked a lot about that now we're looking at silo thinking at, at a lack of collaboration within companies but but and and especially across businesses in an ecosystem if you do not collaborate you will not achieve what we have to achieve someone said earlier we cannot achieve it on our own and i 100 percent agree it has to be an ecosystem game and we don't do enough of that if i look into companies sometimes people in the region not in the headquarter don't understand a lot about sustainability they haven't asked about it there's a lack of communication to a different affiliate so we don't get um get the act together to go towards one one goal then we have the lack of competencies and capabilities. I think until now, in a lot of institutions and businesses, the topic has been a governance topic. Right? It's governance and marketing. For the past 20 years, also Siemens was very, very strong in it. But now it's actually a business topic. It determines in the future a lot of our purposes. It determines how successful you will be in the game. That has been different before. And there's usually only a handful of people in a company until now who are knowledgeable of that topic. And that is not enough. Yeah, that is not enough. Let alone what is requested to report on and all the other things that are said, you cannot deal with it with a couple of people in a company. Fourth, understanding it as a business opportunity for multiple reasons. Um, one is there's new markets, new opportunities. You can make business. There's new business models has been set before. You need to look into that. And then the, the topic of return on investment, and also at the end of the presentation, we'll come to that. It's important to have also in sustainability the return on investment in mind. Yeah? Not every investment is a good investment just because it's green. It also needs to serve other business purposes. A lot of our companies are shareholder owned. Yeah? So how to balance that, how to bring the, bring the conflicting KPIs into one direction without neglecting one or the other, because it's not only about sustainability, but it's making it also profitable. Otherwise, it won't function. Yeah? And at the end, if we don't have lead leaders who have a clear goal, we will leave all of our employees, or I heard there's a lot of representatives from cities and universities here, meaning our citizens, our students, a little bit in vain, where we're actually moving. I mean, 90, 95% of, of the companies have claims now. They have a value statement and they have a goal. Yeah, and this is where we go. But that's only half of the story. A few have actually a strategy behind it, I must say. Now, the third one we should look at, the third problem, the third problem is taking a step further. And I'm really happy that I saw something about revolutions here in the beginning this morning. Um, and I don't know if this is true by academic standards, what you see here, but it's pr pretty much, I'm sure that this is what it's true when I look at the businesses in the field. Actually, it is, I would say, the fifth industrial revolution we're facing right now. And we're not leveraging what we've learned over the past revolutions yet. And actually, every revolution learned from the previous revolution, right? We electrified what has previously been, been powered by, by steam. Then we automated the things that have been electrified. And we took it to the cloud, had digital twins of the automated systems, uh, digitalization. And what now? Seems like we're not completely leveraging, especially digitalization, for sustainability yet. Yeah. Of course, there's certain elements, but, but, but not enough. 
um, we do manual data collection on site, site inspections, yeah, still masses of service teams going out there instead of doing it somehow remotely. Um, and, and pollution monitoring, for example, just to name a couple, um, also still being done a lot manually. So my, my strong belief is if we would build more on those previous um, phases, and by the way, yes, excuse ourselves because actually digitalization hasn't been in place for that long. So it wasn't, you know, in comparison to the other ones, we, we can give ourselves some time, but speed is of essence. And we're not doing it enough. And technology is a key piece of that. I've been beating around the bush now a lot of technology. And so let's look at actually what I mean by technology. Um, and this is what you see here is, is a tech stack. And you can differentiate, obviously, a hardware level. You can have a software platform level. You have a data intelligence level. And then you could also differentiate some of the technologies that are specifically green or specifically for sustainability. Hydrogen fuel cell, I would put into that. Now I named it. <laughs> and there's a few things that are rather, there's a few things that are rather generic. And the more you go to the top, the more generic it is. And data mining, NLP doesn't in the first instance have anything to do with the green cost. But if you have something generic, you can apply it to a broad field in comparison to something that's very specific, which is for a specific niche, right? So the question would be, how do we actually leverage, especially the top part here, as it is so generic, to the large field of green challenges in order to create the speed and scale that we need? And it's of essence to find green use cases. I call them green use cases. I know it's a buzzword green, but it makes it easier for me. Um, how do we find them? Um, there is endless opportunities. Um, and I brought a few examples from, from Siemens just because those are the ones that I know, know best. And you see a few here. I'm not going to go into all the details. Don't worry. Um, you could think about how do you actually structure those green use cases by complexity, technological complexity, by scale scope. You know? um, a few of those are probably very well known, especially if we look at the bottom left corner, calculating a product carbon footprint, automating sustainability reporting. There's a few more advanced ones, digital battery passport, you know, what is included in a EV battery, um, how has it been used over the lifetime, at the end of the lifetime, has it been run down so I cannot reuse it? If I if I can't reuse it, where do I feed back all the ingredients? Yeah, to have a digital battery passport is, is a big thing in the, in, in the automotive industry right now. If you look at neural networks for cooperative um, traffic systems, improvement of congestion, traffic flows, and so on. And then there's eventually some, some, um, some odd ones out, um, some odd ones out, which are more in the top right corner, I guess. Um, you see, for example, um, a blockchain and blockchain circular ecosystems and business models. If you work in ecosystems, one of the biggest challenges is the data exchange, right? It's the gold of the companies. Nobody is willing to share, but you have to share somehow. Oh, I see already five minutes. I'll skip some of the uh, very essential contents then. <laughs> um, uh, so that data exchange needs to be somehow um, encrypted, which is blockchain based in some of the most advanced ecosystems. Yeah? We're good in the five minutes, by the way, because now I'm going to go a little bit faster on, uh, on a deep dive. Now, how do you select which ones of those are actually of, of uh, which ones you should sh start with, right? So that's usually the ones that have biggest value. How do you determine biggest value? Just as an example, yeah, um, I would go into, you, you have a few use cases where you integrate the tech stack. Don't take only one technology, but where can you integrate the tech stack? Where can you leverage data, obviously, and where can you think an ecosystem? We look at the first one, um, how can you integrate a tech stack? Just for examples, I yeah? um, had a project in, um, in Australia, actually, um, for the Great Barrier Reef. Um, and we were simulating um, the response of the Great Barrier Reef to changes in temperatures, um, for example, acidity um, and sedimentation. And we did that by using hardware, as you can see, pumps and valves, but also software control automation system to have a complete simulation of the barrier reef to human behavior um, and maybe ecolo ecological effects. And then afterwards, take preventative actions. Yeah, it's, a, it's a simple case of hardware software integrated and apply it to, to, to the environmental cause. If we look at data and um, had a client that had a huge construction site, construction site of the size of a city or even a country, I must almost say, hundreds of subcontractors, and at the same time, large um, areas that needs to be environmentally protected because of biodiversity and so on. 
So we're trying to figure out which technologies to use, and which patterns to use in order to detect uh, misbehavior on those construction sites. So we took drones, cameras, um, and then sensors where I always forget the name because it's English, LIDAR sensors. We took LIDAR sensors to see where there's changes in the soil and um, where's pipeline leakages, where we'll, there was illegal dumping, speeding on the road by, by, by trucks that are carrying hazardous substances. And that would all play back to a control room alerting, okay, there was misbehavior and you can take preventative action. Yeah. We'll skip the next ones. Um, I think this one might be relevant. And then, and then I come to an end is how do you actually use platforms? And if we take, for example, waste management, um, had the technology of, of GIS, geographical information systems, several sources, satellites, um, GPS um, sensors in the field to create transparency on the volumes, on the type, the location of waste, cities and states and countries. And you can optimize actually to collection and the cleaning based on that, right? So what are the schedules? What are the routes we drive? This would be cost beneficial. And at the end, it rounds up very nicely in an interface where, where um the people steering it and have the visibility and can actually act. Yeah. Okay, we skip the last one and we come to the end. I told you um, I keep it simple, um, so I have a few takeaways for you. So first of all, sustainability requires a transformation of businesses and markets. I think we all agree. Transformation management virtues therefore have to be in place. Second, sustainability, I would call it the fifth industrial revolution. And we need to leverage EAD, electrification, automation, digitalization more extensively in order to make it happen. Technology is key overall to meet our agenda in the businesses for their own ESG performance, but also as a business opportunity. It's just such a big market out there. Fourthly, um, existing conventional technologies have an underestimated key role. I definitely believe in that. And if we want to um, achieve the speed and scale, we need to do tech and tech stack integration, data leverage, and use of platforms and ecosystems. And something that at the end, and I haven't shown it, it's don't do it at all costs. Yeah, that sometimes there's fancy technological solutions being sold. And they might not be worth it. Uh, we had this, this paper, toilet paper roll thing, yeah? and similar thing, maybe in a different realm. And um, always think about when is it when is it really feasible from an economic point of view? Because then only then you can also convince managerial boards. And I think also someone brought up that, that challenge. Yeah? That's still in their thinking. And it's important it's in their thinking because they manage the company. So always look at ROI also of the tech investments. By that, I'm done in time, I guess. Yeah? Thank you.